The Manifestation of the Sons of God, Chapter 6, The Path of His Cross, John 12, Truly, truly, I say to you, unless a grain of wheat falls into the earth and dies, it remains alone, but if it dies, it bears much fruit. He who loves his life loses it, and he who hates his life in this world will keep it to life eternal. If anyone serves me, he must follow me, and where I am, there my servant will be also. If anyone serves me, the Father will honor him. This journey into sonship and the path to a life in his presence is an unfolding experience through the daily application of his cross in our life. As we die out to the soul and the flesh nature, we find that we come more and more alive to a spirit. There is no other way. For some time we've been aware that we're in a time of accelerated change. To that end, we have dedicated and consecrated our hearts to the process and to the demands that the Lord continues to make upon us. It's time for the sons of God to push through the door that has been opened for them. How we do that centers around our ability to grasp and appropriate the completion of the work of the cross in our life. To understand the work of the cross in your life and to work synergistically with the Lord to see its completion within you is absolutely necessary if we're to hasten the process. Malachi 3, Behold, I am going to send my messenger, and he will clear the way before me. And the Lord whom you seek will suddenly come to his temple, and the messenger of the covenant in whom you delight. Behold, he is coming, says the Lord of hosts. But who can endure the day of his coming, and who can stand when he appears? For he is like a refiner's fire, and like fuller's soap. And he will sit as a smelter and purifier of silver, and he will purify the sons of Levi, and refine them like gold and silver, so that they may present to the Lord offerings in righteousness. God's process of refining, changing, and maturing the sons is one of the greatest wonders of this age. It truly is one of the greater works. We may have thought of Psalms 116 in a different light, but truly the death of his godly ones is precious in his sight. Let me read Psalms 116. Quote, precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his godly ones. We're right at the door of the most transformational change we have ever experienced in our lives. I have no doubt that we're at the tail end of a change that is opening the portals of transformation. This is about more than just a work of the cross or another step in the purification of the priesthood. This is about completing His will within you and through you. We're talking about the glorification of the believer, and we're talking about resurrection life, and it will only happen as we stand in His presence. For he is the way, the truth, and the life, John 14. For many, the work of the cross can be a vague and esoteric concept. What does it mean to go through the work of the cross? What does it feel like? How do you know you're in the work of the cross? The key is to really understand what the cross is, and to be able to identify the hand of the Lord as he is working within you. We're in the time that God is completing the work of the cross in his sons. He's completing that which he began within them. To understand this process, we need to understand that the work of the cross deals with the dying out of the soul, the seed of the mind, and the emotions of an individual. Malachi 3. But who can endure the day of his coming? And who can stand when he appears? For he is like a refiner's fire and like fuller soap, and he will sit as a smelter and purifier of silver, and he will purify the sons of Levi and refine them like gold and silver so that, that, that they may present to the Lord offerings in righteousness. As we enter this day of his presence, we're experiencing the fire of God more and more in our lives. People have not understood 
what was happening to them, and so they have drawn back from his deep work of the cross. Instead of worship and thanksgiving, there has been complaining and bitterness until they eventually lost out on their walk with God. In Hebrews 10, But my righteous one shall live by faith, and if he shrinks back, my soul has no pleasure in him. But we are not of those who shrink back to destruction, but of those who have faith to the preserving of the soul. Perhaps in the times past, we've all been a bit of a cross-dodger. Perhaps we've tried to take ourselves off the cross without really understanding. It's important that we understand what the Lord is requiring and how we can work in concert with him to see the cross completed and not protracted in our life. Whether we've understood it or not, we have come to the time where God is completing the work of the cross in our lives. And what's escaped our attention is just how far we've come and how close we really are to the completion of this work, so much closer than we've been able to see. The death of the flesh nature is not a doctrine. It's an experience that God's sons live every moment. Paul spoke of this in Second Corinthians 4 when he said, Always carrying about in my body the death of Christ. Paul was very aware that he was dying out to the soul and flesh nature as he became more fully alive to God. We may not have understood that we have been experiencing a deep work of the cross, a dying out to our old nature. We need to understand that we have a great deal of leverage in seeing the completion of this work of the cross in our life. Now, how, you might ask? Through working in unison with the Lord, rather than fighting the process, it's time to put to death the last vestige of the flesh, both the reactions, the murmurings, the complaining, and the unbelief, all of it, that we might live in His presence. And there's only one place and one place alone that we actually die. And that is in his presence. The cross is not completed anywhere else but in his presence. Reread Malachi 3. The Lord has taken great lengths to position each of his sons in just the right atmosphere to accelerate the completion of this process. And he knows just how to do it. He knows how to position you in just the right dynamics to put you through the ref- the fire of refinement. We must understand that in the final analysis, he is looking for a total submission and abandonment of all that we are to him. You have been marked for sonship. You have been chosen to break through the limitations that you've known in this limited physical existence. Your destiny is nothing short of entering into the fullness of sonship. It's an incredible calling, and your life is in the throes of tremendous change. You must understand that the work of the cross is the only path to real change. You must set your will to work in synergy with him as he finishes your preparation, for God is hastening the completion of the cross in the lives of his sons during this season. He's cutting the time short. There is a time at which all undergo a process of death. The only question is whether we partake of the death process on this side of the veil, or must we pass over to the other side for it to be completed. If we fully partake of the death to our soul nature on this side of the veil, then we will partake of a resurrection on this side of the veil. With death comes resurrection. Let me explain further. While in this body we have the opportunity to undertake change much more quickly than if we existed as spirit, this may be a unique concept to you. However, I'll tell you this, as long as we're here on this side of the veil, we're able to change and mature much more rapidly. The minute we pass to the other side of the veil and the soul, in effect, sleeps, then our ability to progress and mature God moves at a much slower pace. 
Why is that? Because as a triune being, having a spirit, soul, and body, these dynamics create a much greater potential for the cross to be hastened in your life. If we undergo the death process on this side of the veil, we will possess resurrection life. If this process of the cross is not completed before we die, then we will experience a transition and the process must be completed on the other side of the veil. I would much rather complete the process on this side, here and now, and enter into the resurrection of our spirit, soul, and body. Our ability to grow and change by embracing the cross positions us to do just that. Understanding the dynamics behind the work of the cross and being able to identify what the Lord is doing and giving yourself to Him in this process is a huge step. You will walk without walls, without reactions, without anger or resentment, and without bitterness to the path He has chosen for you to walk. This is one of the most important lessons we could learn while on this earth, in this life, on this side of the veil. This is the key to His presence. There is no path to sonship in a believer's life that does not course through a deep and total work of the cross. The fundamental problem has been that we have not been able to recognize the process when we were in the midst of it, to recognize and understand the requirements and demands He is making upon you, and to grasp the experience of the work of the cross in your life hastens your completion. God is finishing the job. He is putting the fire to the last tidbits of the flesh nature that have hindered our ability to see Him. There is no other way. We have been ushered in to live in His presence 24-7. This provision is a reality now. We don't have to be perfect to move into this day of His presence, but as we press in, His appearing to us will complete the work and transformation. As we rise into His presence, the dross of the flesh falls away. The judgments issue forth from His throne, and the greater works unfold.